<clears throat> but hey, apparently we're live, Dan. There we go. The magic Scary, of the internet. It? I know. I know. Suddenly there's millions of people watching us and we don't actually know why we're here today. But you got a cup of tea ready? Uh, do you know, um, I've got I've got a, a Coke uh, and and then some water. I'm trying to drink more water and I find that if I have it in the bottle that I use that I take to work, uh, or should I say I used to take to work, um, that, that helps me uh, stay on top of it. But Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's definitely um, important to uh, to keep your fluids up. But uh, yeah, hopefully we're we're ready and going. I haven't seen any views pop up yet, but it normally takes about a minute. Or so so once we're a minute in, we'll do the intros and uh, hopefully people can say hello and join in and see yeah. who we are. Um, it's always that thing is, are we actually live? But hopefully we are. <laughs> We can just crack on and go. It, it says live up in the corner. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we're ready to go. Okay. Right, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to uh, another Dadler Soul Deep Dive with me, Mark Croppy. And today I'm joined by Dan Reed. Uh, he is career dad. Hello, Dan. Hey, how you doing, mate? You good? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right, actually. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Dave. Uh, he's come up and said, we seem pretty live. So that's good. Someone was listening. <laughs> it is good. And, you know, I just I went on to the, the Dadless Soul Facebook page as well. And I was like, yes, no, it's here. It's here. We're all we're all good. It's, it's always a bit freak, yeah. isn't it? But we're here. Thank you. Thank you for the comments coming in. Tell us live. Anyway, Dan, uh, Dan Reed is head of platform delivery at Barclays. Uh, he has uh, he's a dad of two beautiful kids and founder of Career Dad. Um, and uh, Dan says he started his career, uh, sorry, he started career dad for guys that are passionate about their career, but not at the expense of having family. Uh, mm. I just wanted to help people understand they aren't binary decisions and it's possible to have both. So, uh, yeah, it's like a lot of us, it's like dad or work and it's not like yeah. that all the time, is it? It's, it's not. And, you know, I think it's it it depends as well you can be influenced by your obviously your surroundings and 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 how you 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 grew up and i had um i was talking to a guy uh sam dosa who's uh, kind of a life mentor guru type guy and, and he was saying that that as 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 children by the time that we hit 7 we are influenced in our in our decisions and we've taken on board all of that external feedback from parents teachers uncles aunties and siblings um, and that stays with us. And I think that in my own upbringing, uh, I came from quite a traditional household where my dad was very corporate career driven. My mum was more stay at home mum. And then she, you know, when they divorced, I was eight. And then she obviously was went back to work and, and all that good stuff. But yeah, I had it drilled into me that um, you, you, you focus on your career kind of at the expense of your family. That was almost my dad's top tip <laughs> that's kind of the old ways isn't it and yeah. that's the kind of thing of what you're doing and us at dad Soul we're trying to do is is to say actually work is the means to us having a better family life and, and having a better life for ourselves um not at the expense of family yeah absolutely and i think that when i uh i knew that i wanted a family from a very very young age like five uh which is very surreal um but <laughs> <laughs> um but uh we'll leave park that one for another day um yeah and and then i think that as i got into my teens and my 20s uh, and you know i've i'm quite lucky i met my wife when i was at university and we've been together kind of ever since and it's so far has worked out um but we uh when we got into our mid-20s and we're like yeah we we want um family and my career was was I guess just about taking off and and I was thinking well I don't want to give that up I don't want to I'm really enjoying that kind of career ride but I don't want to be a weekend dad or just a not present yeah. dad and I was just riddled with so much guilt and anxiety um about how I was going to do both of these things and it's only yeah through a lot of life lessons um and thankfully flexible employers and the world as a whole and society is starting to change as well and you know the fantastic work you guys are doing i do feel like we're in an era where you genuinely can have both yeah i think it's about all of us reaching out and talking about our experiences and that's what we're here to do today you know we're here to talk about um i wouldn't say that we would put our hands up and say hey we're the number one expert on working from home but both me and you are, are doing that at the moment um for me it, it's been a little while working from home um i decided to jack in my office uh last year because you know it just seemed ridiculous for me to me to commute into brighton 
to sit in an mm-hmm. office to then come home again. And and it was okay when I had a number of employees, you know, that was okay. But when I started to outsource work and I got people working from their own homes, it's kind of like, why am I sat in an office on my own? Why have I just driven? And actually it's only half an hour, three quarters of an hour drive. Why the hell did I just drive to an office to sit there to then <laughs> worry about finding a parking space and then come home again? So, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I, I built up- as well. Was was that by yourself? We was it was it kind of like a co working space, or were you by yourself? Uh, no, it was a kind of co working space. It was mm. it wasn't a co working space. It was a friend of right. mine. He had a print firm. He had some spare office. I had a corner of that. Fine. So so there was other people there. But initially, when we first moved in, um, I had three or four members of staff working there. So we needed a base. Right. We needed someone. And when we had an apprentice there as well, of course, you can't have an apprentice working from home. So yeah. you know, we definitely needed that place where they could come to work. But, you know, as, as I started to outsource work and had to change the way the business model works, you know, to try and cost cut, um, you know, it, it sort of left me with just me in this office. And it was nice to go in and see other people. But yeah. I kind of thought I'm wasting my time a bit here. Um, yeah. Now, you've kind of been thrown into working from home quite recently with the lockdown, haven't you? Yeah. So it's it's interesting because so pre-lockdown i'm a huge advocate of flexible working um i think that as the lockdown was coming in we had a lot of people and myself included were adding noise to this space of well is 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 covid going to be the poster child for flexible working we're all going to be thrust into this new um and i i thought it wouldn't be but for different reasons to why i think it it, it hasn't but you're you're right in that i worked from home a day a week i work two days in london uh, two days in Northampton, um, and I live in Northampton, and I, I usually work from home a day a week, and that's my setup. Now I've been working from home uh, every day uh, for fifty six days, and I know that because I, as you as we were talking before, I do a daily uh, lockdown video that's meant to be a semi comedic take on lockdown life, um, and I've just posted day fifty six. So and and it's been incredibly hard because. Um, I think for me, where working from home really works is because it's part of that flexible working um, in that I, I, I can work from home, but I can work from the office or I can work from a cafe or I can work from wherever I feel like I'm going to get the most out of what I need for the work that I'm doing, whether it's deep thinking work or meeting work or whatever it is. And now we're in something that used to be called flexible working, but is the least flexible flexible working that i've ever encountered um i, I find it really tough I find it incredibly yeah. tough I, I think it's important oh by the way i just seen that pop up shane hello from the uh east coast of the us thank you for joining us uh, international audience now so brilliant. Uh, yeah brilliant thank you for joining us um yeah I, I think it's important to say actually what this is and what people are experiencing at the moment is not working from home it's <laughs> it's trying to juggle many things you're a school teacher you're a parent you're yeah. you're working from i mean it's just it's a nightmare for so many people to be thrust into this yeah and i and i think the thing that that i'm struggling the most with and i'd be interested to get kind of your take and also you know um the, the listeners take as well is a sense of self i feel is being lost somewhat because at least when i was out working um there was delineation between being dad at home and then leaving to go on a commute to go to work and now that there, there isn't and and there are some great benefits to that um for example the other day i woke up and it was 20 to 9 my wife my wife and i alternate who kind of gets up with the kids um she got up with the kids and i woke up at 20 to 9 for a nine o'clock meeting and was showered, showered, dressed coffee uh, in 20 minutes, which I just wouldn't have been able to do. Yeah. But there's, there's no, there's no time for me. And I, I, I almost feel bad saying that because my wife's downstairs looking after two kids and when, when is she having her time? But I am going to talk about it selfishly because I think it's still important. And, um, yeah, I, I really struggle with just not having that time for, for me. And we were talking before we started recording that, you know, I used to write for my website kind of an article a week and I haven't written in two months because it's so hard to find that time to just sit down in quiet where I'm not feeling guilty about not doing the dishes or not taking the baby or not doing something. Um, yeah. I'm struggling with it. So I, I don't know how you finding that. Um, yeah, I, I think, 
uh, what's that? I don't care about the pubs and restaurants. When do the grandparents reopen? Oh. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's certainly something that, uh, um, and actually, will be that's a nice link actually into next week. We got uh, Brittany Lodgson coming in to talk about um, baby massage and dealing with, and it's obviously very focused on baby side, but actually, I think it's quite important when for us, you know, we've got a young baby in the house to we've lost that that grandparents you know we've lost mm. that, that touch with them so it's so it's really important to to have that connection um just going back to to what you were saying actually and again this is another link and another plug to in two weeks <laughs> time we've got uh, a guy called james boardman coming on and he's a ex royal marine commando now to mm. any of a P, pt instructor now he, he he's written a book and he talks about the golden hour in the morning now uh, this is something i've, I've read and, and heard about in other books as well it's about taking that time out in the morning for yourself it's about you know having your own time now i i not everyone can do that right you know not everyone can just go hey i'm i'm off out but but for me i i'm getting up you know early at 6 six twenty. i'm having a coffee i'm then going out for a run or, or doing mm-hmm. something I'm, I'm spending that first hour of the day with me and i think that's really important if you don't do that and and this is another thing to sort of touch on is those boundaries between home and work because they've been lost yeah. So I think you need to set those boundaries between home and work. So, yeah, definitely still having that you time and definitely not allowing work to creep in with home life. That's the mm. most difficult balance here at the moment. But also, I think we've got to realise that, again, going back to what we said is this isn't normal working from no. home practices. You know, let's just say the world hopefully it never goes back to normal because we were being very destructive of this planet. So I hope the new normal is a lot more conscious of our environment and our surroundings, which means cutting down on our travel. Mm. Um, But it will also mean the kids will be back at school. There'll be a regular rhythm to life. Um, And that's really important to get back into. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And and there's a couple of things uh, there that you touched on, I think are really important and, (laughs) and interesting for me because um so i I was talking to uh there's a lady called uh agnes who works out in brussels and she's kind of a a flexible working um, advocate works with uh, governments and and companies to to kind of look at instilling flexible working and she was talking about the the four archetypes of work characteristics so whether you're um a divider so you like to have this is my work and then work finishes and this is my you know family and there's that delineation um and I can't remember um, all, all of them offhand, but but we we discovered that that mine was fluid. So where I work and live best is where work flows into lifetime, and life flows into work time. And it's all you know. I can be having dinner, checking my work phone, but I can be three o'clock in the afternoon, um, dropping work to go and t- pick the kids up from school and go to the park. And that's how I feel, I guess, um, most satisfied. Now this is super fluid and I can't cope with it. (laughs) So, so now I think I need to, as you say, I need to kind of put on the brakes a little bit and go, do you know, I need, I need some sort of divide. And I have this internal battle because I'm like, well, how this goes against how I operate, but something has to give. Otherwise I'm just like, my wife said to me earlier, she's like, what's wrong with you? Thinking nothing's wrong with me. She's like, what's going on in your head? And I listed out everything and I was thinking, I said, oh, well, I've got this, this, this show tonight. And I'm just thinking, I've had, is, is everything set up? Um, you know, and I'm thinking I haven't, I haven't done the voiceover for the daily vlog. I've not done my article. Uh, I need to edit this podcast. Then there's work. Then there's this and this and this. And she was like, well, no wonder you look like a mess. Like, you know, yeah. all these things. And I think something, and it's interesting that you say about <laughs> that golden hour, um, because I think what, I don't know whether you've come across time boxing. As no. A, as a, no. Well, I've literally just heard it as a phrase a few times, but it's, uh, and I could be getting it completely wrong. So if anyone's listening to this, do not take this as gospel. But my, my, <laughs> my understanding is that the way that our mind works, we're incredibly productive in short bursts and only good at repeating the same task a number of times. So the, the theory being that you do, a task in 20 minute blocks have a five minute break and you're only allowed to do 20 minute blocks on the same thing three times so you know if you're doing you know (laughs) writing 20 minutes five minutes writing 20 minutes and then at the end of that third block you then have a 20 minute break to do something you know draw just do something completely different then go back now i'm i'm always a bit skeptical of things like this because i just think they're kind of a you know, an MBA lecture kind of waiting to happen. But 
I'm seeing some people who I really admire and respect talk about it. And I think I actually just need to put my ego to the side and actually look into it or just try it. And so I think that that might help. Yeah. Um, so I haven't heard it called that, but obviously it's, it sounds time boxing is, is a good um, representation of it. I read a book and I'm trying to remember the guy's name. It's James someone. It's called um, Hyperfocus. Okay. Uh, so I think it's James. I'm thinking of. I'm thinking. Of, I've got a couple of books mixed up in my head, but uh, I, I, it's definitely hyper focus. It's how to focus on a task. And actually, right. if you can hyper focus on a task, you can get that task uh, task that might take you half a day. You can get that done in an hour. You know, right, okay. literally, we are so inefficient. You can't actually. People say they're multitask. They can't. They're trying to do mm. multiple things at once, but they're not doing any of them very well. Yeah. And it can actually take us about. 10 to 20 minutes to properly task switch from one to the other so yeah. uh, but also you need to do it in short bursts so right. when you're working you know really only focus on a 20 minute block and then a five minute break so it kind of went as soon as you said Fine. that it kind of reminded me of that you our brain can only hyper focus for a short period of time and the mm. more you do it the the better you'll get the long, longer chunks you'll be able to have in between so yeah um, and that's why going back to what you were saying about this sort of fluid workspace, I mean, I, I've i tried to have I'm at work now time, um, but now at the moment with the kids, um, you know, it's like, well, oh, daddy, can you help me with this? And then you're not working. You don't want to say, no, it's work time, the door shut, when the door shut, yeah. I'm in. And, and I know some people can do that, but actually for, for a lot of people, that's a really hard thing to do. And I think that's, mm -hmm. you know, probably the same as what you're experiencing at the moment. Yeah, so and and I feel incredibly fortunate um for a for a number of reasons. The fact I still have a job and I'm still still getting paid is is great. And um yeah, you know, I've got this this office, uh, which I'm happy to do a quick virtual tour of. Uh but you know, there's there's a whiteboard, there's a few guitars, so I can kind of just have a bit of downtime as as well if I if I need it. Uh, but um, you know, when my doors close, that usually means that I'm on a call or you know, I'm doing something like this, but it's it's never a don't don't feel like you can't interrupt me. I'm just yeah. trying to signal that. But yeah, my, my son, um, he's asleep now, but he'd run in constantly um, with what he feels is quite pressing issues. And it's sometimes um, I can't defeat the boss on Mario. And I'm like, yes. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to say sorry. Can you just bear with me? I need to kick Bowser's ass. I mean, how do you how do you find that? Uh, for me, uh, I work with uh, obviously doing what I do with Dad the Soul and working with a lot of dads. And actually, when we're having our Dad the Soul meeting, if one of the kids comes in, that's just part of the course. Um, yeah. The, in my in my own business, I did a lot with tradespeople, and actually, right. you know, it, it's quite yeah. accepting. How how does that work in the corporate world? You know, if you're having a a, a really sort of in depth conversation and the kids come in is it now more accepted because people are working from home i think i think it is i think that so historically and i and i say i've been advocating and and really fighting for working from home flexible working in the corporate environment for for years now and i think the one hurdle that i always still got was if you're a parent and you're working from home your kids should not be there so if you're you know if your kid's sick and you say, well, I need to work from home today because my kid's sick. That's kind of a, well, are you working or are you sure. just looking after your kid, right? Um, and and my my whole philosophy on work as a, as a whole is that actually we shouldn't, um, you know, the whole nine to five thing and, you know, measuring people on time is just stupid. We, it's, we, very yeah, now, it's, it? very, it's, it's very old fashioned. It's very old fashioned. And that actually, you know, all of our, actually even if you go into some of our contracts um but you know the way that again in the corporate world everyone has key performance indicators and yeah. you know metrics end of year have you achieved this no one's objectives are i'm going to be at my desk monday to friday nine to five everyone's objectives are related to outcomes am i going to achieve said outcome and that doesn't matter whether it's nine to five or what's going so when when you have people who are saying well are they working I'd always flip it around and say, well, are they achieving what you're expecting of them? Because if so, even if they're doing that over three days a week, who cares? Like, who yeah. does does it actually matter? Um, now with lockdown, there's no choice, right? So I think that, and I I, I like to try and, um, you know, walk the walk, not just talk the talk. So I, I will be on calls with some of our managing directors and I'll have a baby bouncing on my knee. Uh, as as a as a man as a guy as a dad because it's not you know i want everyone to try and feel comfortable that this is 
acceptable. Yeah. I think it comes down to the personalities of, of the other. So we do have, I think when, again, when this started, when we went into week one of lockdown, it was, hey, let's have big team calls, get all the kids in and let's all, that lasted a few days. And then it was, <laughs> that's a nightmare. Um, and I, I, and I was talking to someone earlier on this um, and because my wife's on maternity leave, uh sometimes i do no one's directly asked the question but i've i've sensed it in their tone when i'm on a meet in a meeting and i've got n normally my, my baby and someone says oh I, I thought your wife's on maternity leave and i go yeah you know she is and it's like oh <laughs> right. okay and you could you know you know what the underlying yeah. question is yeah but, exactly yeah 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 I, I, I think that's um at, at the end of the day uh, if you could do your job properly you know if mm. someone's not accepting that that's kind of their problem isn't it you know exactly. if, the, if the majority of everyone else is accepting of this and this is a new way um you know I, I think we've got to get over the fact of why are people traveling for two four hours mm. a day to go and sit in an office it's crazy you know, yeah. and, I, and I think like what we've got to realize is this position, and we'll go back to what we said earlier, is not normal. <clears throat> this is not normal yeah. working from home. But hopefully, it'll give some people a taster of, yeah, actually, I can be productive. Um, yeah. It's just making ourselves more productive and making sure homework don't bleed into each other and affect our family life as well. Mm, it was it was interesting because uh as say I, I was on the call to our internet provider earlier today to sort out uh an upgrade and um i was talking to uh i tried to do it all online it wouldn't work so i had to call up the call center and there's the you know the four or five minutes of just please don't call us once i'd got through that and i spoke to someone um you know she said oh you have to bear with me because i'm working from home and i said i just uh, started going into a mini kind of q a oh do you usually work from home how are you how are you finding this and and yeah she was saying you know she was a a, a mum of three um she said working from home never done it before uh really difficult with the kids being off but when this goes back to some level of normal and the kids are back in school she's like the 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 um uh, internet service provider that she was with have said that yeah they're they're not going to mandate returning to the offices like people right, can't okay. work from home uh you know a hundred percent but you know definitely a couple of days a week won't be a problem and this was she was like this is revolutionary this is going to be fantastic so that was a really really nice moment actually yeah I, I think actually looking at the bigger picture of things for for people it, it could save hours of commuting it, it's it has environmental impact it has impacts on our infrastructure yeah. uh, and and also you know big companies won't need massive office blocks in in cities anymore you know they well, did you they, hear sorry i was just saying don't know whether you heard um so jess staley who's uh barclays ceo um was in the news about a week ago uh because he, he i think i don't know whether it was flippantly or not but sort of said you know we're gonna have to rethink these seven thousand people office blocks like they're probably gonna yeah. be a thing of the past and now there's a bit of a panic of D what <laughs> does what does that mean but it kind of makes sense right well can you imagine um you know if we're working from home and our homes are becoming offices office blocks could become homes you know that would also yeah. solve so, i mean homelessness you, uh, yeah exactly I, I mean you must have well i don't know have you ever walked around sort of london city on a sunday yeah. It's freakily weird. You walking yep. around all these buildings. It's like being on a movie set, isn't it? Yeah. And there yeah. is no one there. And it is the most strangest things. And you think, what a waste of, of resource we've got here. So I was talking to my father-in-law about this yesterday because <clears throat> we were saying, uh, you know, if if what happens, so the two days I'm in London is usually Canary Wharf. Canary Wharf, Monday to Friday, is like Disneyland. You can't move. But, yeah. but as you say, Saturday and Sunday, it's dead. There's no one there. So what happens if Canary Wharf doesn't have that influx of, of Monday to Friday traffic? What happens to the small businesses that mm. rely on that trade? But to your point, do we actually just repurpose? And, you know, there'd be some, you could turn, I know definitely the Barclays building in Canary Wharf, if you turn that into some, some nice flats, that's not a bad place to live. Yeah. <laughs> Um, exactly yeah I, I think it's about repurposing you know uh, mm. the way we live and i think we need to do it um anyway just for all our listeners there please get involved and uh, oh hang on we've got a comment coming up uh, i found that far 
uh, I found that far from suffering, my productivity at work has increased as I'm more uh, conscious, uh, conscientious of what I'm doing. Yeah, I think I think that's definitely a, a, another thing. Actually, if we're being more conscientious and um, you know really setting out our day and being aware of our time and our family time and those breaks mm. in between, then I think you know productivity can increase. I think companies have got to trust people to be able to do that. Yeah, I, I think and, and something that I'm kind of moving into uh, next week and we were talking about uh, time boxing, but is just what I found is that my work diary um, is usually back to back of either calls or I sometimes block things in to say I need to actually now do this piece of work. But what I'm going to start putting in is things like coffee with kids obviously i'll be having the coffee as opposed to them but um (laughs) yeah it's but or or, you know just play play switch with my son or or do something because what i found at the start was um a call an hour call would end after 50 minutes and i'd rush downstairs for 10 minutes have this kind of panicked right i'm here i'm here but i have to also be back and 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 it's just not good and, and and my son said to me whenever i came downstairs he'd say you want a break now have you got is this your five minutes or whatever and i thought i don't this is going to go on for a long time i don't want him to be like oh this is you know my allocated 300 seconds yeah um, so uh-huh. so yeah i think from you know i i already I, I do like to start the week by looking you know that my, my i had today off so to have kind of an extra long weekend but but tomorrow um i spend the first kind of 15 20 minutes of every week just looking at the week ahead and and kind of removing stuff that i don't need meetings i don't need to attend uh getting other people to go to meetings that i don't feel like i need to attend and then the bit where uh right what gaps do i have and how do i use them purposefully so that's something that i'm going to try really hard this week i think diary planning is really key to to any sort of success either in or out of work isn't it and Mm. it's it's now making sure i think when you you go on a train or car to work you know those boundaries are there aren't they and we've got to work out how to we've got to create a sort of non-physical boundary haven't we within work you know we we had those physical boundaries daddy's come in he's walked through the door hey it's daddy time for a bit Mm. uh you know and I, I think the danger is it slips where you go oh, i'm on the phone still and you know we yeah. need to be able to turn our phone off at a certain time and say i'm not at work now yeah. uh, but also and the then- family's got to understand just because we're here doesn't mean we're not at work and I think that's that's the really interesting point right because I think that if I'm in the office and I've had you know two hours of back-to-back calls or I've just been kind of writing you know a strategy or something I like to even if I just walk around the office block for kind of five or ten minutes just to have that right kind of unwind go into that next phase I can't do that um in this little room so I no. have to you know I I have to go downstairs but then it's a ooh have a baby or ooh do do this do that and and that's all good stuff but it's just it's another thing so it's yeah I think it's just yeah I don't know whether I kept the kind of have a rope ladder out the window or something and just try and escape that way but it is just trying to think how do I get that time um but also realizing that you know my wife's probably thinking exactly the same thing yeah yeah that, that's a really hard and I think you know creating those boundaries is, is definitely something we need to do and actually that that'll lead on to the next question which we'll go on into a, in a minute but um if there mm. are anyone out there that wants to ask questions of us so both me and Dan have, have been well Dan is, is new to working from home but he's he helps out dads uh, and people with uh with uh their careers and, and making sure um you know that you can have a career and be a dad at the same time um so yeah do get involved with the chat i see there's a question on there from joe i'll just read that in a second um and yeah you are listening to the dad to soul a deep dive and it's funded by worthing community chest and i am here with dan reed so uh yeah dan um before i go on to my next question let's just have a read of this one from joel so made the sure. mistake of naming one of my businesses after my daughter so she's literally the boss Luckily, we are family-friendly cafe and encourage others to bring children and enjoy a relaxed environment together with our parent, with uh, with other parents. I mean, I think that that's lovely, and uh, mm. to be able to take that home and and have you know to build a, a family-friendly career. I mean, that's what I enjoy about working with Dad and Soul. Um, is you know, it is a it, it's 
I can't call it a career because we're all volunteering here, but you know, it's, it's a family friendly atmosphere and that's such a nice thing to create, but mm. not everyone, I guess, has that luxury, unfortunately. And they are even at home tied to a desk and, and also yeah. people might not have the space to work in. Um, that's the thing, you know, they're, yeah. they're sat on the, the, in the living room table and suddenly their, their whole house becomes an office yeah and you know so when when i started kind of doing the day a week or i mean when i started first dipping my toe into working from home a few years ago it was kind of one it was when i when needed so as in the boiler needed servicing it was it was kind of three times a year sort of thing and that's because the manager i had didn't like it despite there being a company policy that was everyone's allowed to work from home you don't need an excuse I think with a lot of this stuff, especially in corporate world, it comes down to who is your manager and what's their individual take on a situation. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, because it was so infrequent, I just was plonked on the breakfast bar. Um, and that's really hard because how do you switch up? You're, you're in the living space. And I yeah. think that when I started doing a, you know, a day a week or sometimes two days, that's where I thought I just want to and thankfully had the space to go. I'm, I'm kind of commandeering this room and and this is this is mine now and that that really helps because i can just close the door on it you know i, I only come in here to work so it's it's yeah. quite nice it's just a workspace and actually we're we're looking at creating um we're going to build a, a summer house it's only going to be a small one in the garden Brilliant. um to, to have as an office because i we we've got um a six month old in the house reggie and there's now six of us crammed into a three bedroom house we ha I built a little office area in the corner of our bedroom, which is great. Now, mm -hmm. when Reggie's asleep in there, I now have to bring my laptop downstairs. And, yeah. you know, we're all over the house and we're sharing and we just need that space. And it's not just going to be an office. You know, it can, can become a playroom. <clears throat> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it multifunctional. Um, yeah. So, yes, yeah, it's definitely, definitely having that clear boundary with the workspace. But, again, um, I think it's, it's almost going to be impossible for everyone to be able to do that um so uh yeah, yeah thank you for that um we got another question here from matt adam matt uh comments for dan are interesting working in a court working in corporate the expectations before all this was you can't work from home with young kids but almost <laughs> proves actually you can yeah i mean what's what's the alternative right i mean this is and and yeah th thanks matt for, for that comment because it's something that i definitely <laughs> struggled with particularly as someone who um was always pushing my career you know i've been barclays seven years now i've been fortunate enough to have a number of promotions in that time but they've you know i've i've all, almost been chat you know i went to one interview once and this is this is real i haven't actually shared this with anyone um i i it's went good. to <laughs> this exclusive i went to i went to um an interview uh internally this was just, oh, must, must have been just, no, probably two years ago, actually, uh, because it was before my daughter was born and before my wife was pregnant. So it must have been a couple of years ago. And um, it was it was a, a promotion role and it was full time in London. And uh, I was being uh, interviewed by who would be my boss, uh, who was a woman. And she said to me, do you have any kids? Um, said, yep, I got I got one kid. She went, are you thinking of having any others? And I thought, I thought this is just chat. So yeah. I was like, yeah, uh, I said, probably, yeah, would like to, to have another one. She went, hmm, how do you feel about uh, commuting to London five days a week when you have a newborn baby? And it was one of the first times where you hear kind of women talk about this all the time, kind of discreet. And I just thought, I don't like this question. You know, it wow. was, it was, and, and yeah, there's definitely been this, you know, if you want to make it in the corporate world, you put your family on hold, uh, particularly in London. Um, and and yeah, you can't work from home with small kids. Now, we're all doing it, right? I mean, it's not ideal, don't get me wrong, like if I had the choice, but we're all doing it. So I've, I've really enjoyed kind of uh, metaphorically sticking that finger up <laughs> and, say, <laughs> and saying, you know, we're all we're all getting by. And, and actually, as uh, as was said earlier, you know, if, if people are possibly being more productive at home because they don't have the distractions of the office. Yes, we might have the distractions at home, but if we continue to do this and the kids are back at school, yeah. um, we won't have those distractions. And I, and I think, you know, by being going back to being hyper focused, we can mm -hmm. get 
what we can get done in a day. I know there's people there that maybe are customer facing and you do have to be there between a set amount of time. You can't just yeah. go, well, I've done, I've done all my work today in two hours and turn <laughs> off and, and yeah, you yeah. Know, you're on a customer service call. You know, I, I get that. But for, for if we've got to get a certain amount of background work done in a week, then we could cram that into a couple of days or between the kids going to yep. school. Isn't that a nice thing to be at home and rather than commuting to be able to go, we'll walk the kids to school you know, we'll, we'll get back. We'll, we can grab a coffee on the way back, yeah. you know, if you live near a cafe and then yeah. come to work. And, and that's quite important, actually, that something you mentioned earlier about having a break and, and going for a walk around the office block. Mm. You know, should we be getting up, getting dressed, going for a walk, you know, whether we got kids or not, regardless, and then coming back into the house to start work, making that separate? <laughs> So uh, I'm really glad you've asked that because um, so obviously the the government guidance has been updated. Uh, we could talk about that if you want. Uh, I'll try not show. to. <laughs> That's another show. Um, but I think uh, there is some ambiguity with that. However, one thing that is incredibly clear is that you can uh, go out to exercise as many times as you want. Uh, a day whereas yeah. previously it was once a day now i know that people some people have done whatever they wanted to anyway um yes. however in in some ways i'm very rebellious and in other ways i'm very law-abiding and for the one type of exercise a day i was very law-abiding now like you i kind of like my running and so i like to go for a run kind of early afternoon um and so what i was missing was that shift between leaving the house to start work so actually now what i'm really looking forward to and i'm going to do tomorrow is even if it's just leave the house at 8 45 and just do a 10 minute walk around the block and come back just to have that 10 minutes to myself and almost simulate a commute i think it's really important i, I found that actually and, and it's not just working from home it's anywhere but i found um sometimes i've my head has been so full of i've had so many calls and the kids are there and i've just gone do you know what i need to go out and we've got some lovely woods around us and i've mm. i've gone and thinking i cannot cope with all the stuff that's happening right now yeah gone for a walk around the woods and come back completely fresh and i think that's that's part of the day and part part of the golden hour time as well absolutely um, so we just got lovely Matt Dumbleton here, one of our, our lovely Dadler Soul uh, funding guys. Da, da, Matt, um, this uh, this is funded by Worthing Community Chess. I'm getting it in there, so uh, you can tell me how <laughs> what a good boy I am later. Um, so uh, Matt has found having the kids at home means he feels a bit like he's not getting either work or home role now down. I, I, I get you there. I hear that. Um, it's taking the, quite a lot of self discipline to stay applied to tasks for work. Equally, lots of self compassion. If I don't get to do everything I want to do that being said i'm way happier uh they're home uh, when they're home with us so yeah mm. that's again it just goes back to having those boundaries and and creating that that work-life balance yeah and i think on on that and something that i spend quite a lot of time talking around is judgment and i think that we can judge ourselves far too harshly and i think that you know i i, I agree with matt i think there's times where i feel right, I'm not getting home right, I'm not focusing on work, I'm not focusing on anything. And I just think in hindsight, it's really easy to look back and go, I could have done that so much better. And yeah. that's great from a learning perspective, and you know, not to repeat mistakes. But I think as well, and the same with homeschooling, right, I, I was thinking, well, am I doing the best that I can at that moment in time? Or did I do the best that I could have done in that moment in time? And if the answer is yes, then I'm not going to worry too much about it because yeah what <laughs> what <laughs> you, you know. just have to do your best you know the kids are alive yeah. um i just saw another question chris if you just pop that back up from janice there so uh, hello janice um would would you see the time you spend commuting as a waste of time now can i i'll just add things on there because actually you've probably yeah, you commuted more than i did but i i still as part of my work now drive around a lot and that could be very dead time especially listening to radio I decided a while back when there was so much talk on the radio about Brexit and it was just rubbish. I got fed up with it. I'm not listening to the radio anymore. So I started to listen to podcasts. I started to listen to audio books and I made the most of my dead time driving because I can still drive around two, three hours a week. So I think if people do have to commute and they will do, you know, to make the best use of that time by listening, by reading rather than sat there looking out the window, it's, 
it, you can utilize that time to learn and progress yourself. I, I don't know what your thoughts are. Yeah, no, I, I, I kind of completely agree. I, I think that commuting, I, I miss it. I, I really miss it. I think that, you know, especially um, the commute into London, I loved, which I know is a weird thing, um, but I, I, I love people and being around people and so yes i was up early and yes i was on a seven o'clock train and it was taking two hours door to door for me to get to, to to the office but i would read or i would write um i would listen to podcasts i'd listen to music i'd take my switch i'd just oh, I'd watch netflix and just have you know on a london day i'd have four hours of me time um, just completely uninterrupted me time and uh i i really really miss that so i think Yes, it can be dead time, um, but I think it's then how you use that dead time, or even if you use it to do nothing, and that's purposeful, and that's that's cool as well. I, I find um, part of what you said there quite alien. You know, I think whenever I go up into London to go to the museums, I'm like, help, help, people, help. You know, I, yeah, I have my wife's like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but I, I get what you're saying there about um, you. You kind of lost your me time, um, yeah. which is quite interesting. Yeah. So now, what I try and do is, um, uh, it's funny as well, and I, I don't know whether we'll come onto this, but um, I used to talk about tips from about tips for working from home, but they were based on the person who was working from home being um, being alienated in a way because they're working from home. When everyone else is in a physical space and actually you're at a disadvantage there so how do you kind of regain some of that balance and yeah. i was thinking about this the other day actually a lot of those tips uh, i've thrown out the window now because you can't be on eight hours of zoom calls back to back that's just not good for anyone so yeah. so i find now that if i have kind of three meet you know if i've got an hour and a half of meetings i'll say up front i'm not going to be on video call for this and i'll put my daughter in the pram and the other day we went on a uh, kind of a, a six kilometer walk and it was great and just getting out and just having you know me time to some extent but just yeah, yeah. That, i found that really good yeah, I, th I think we need to try and find a way to get that back. And uh, I see uh, Joel's just popped up there saying about uh, Matt doing, um, you know, poi classes and stuff, uh, which which can form part of people's timetables. And actually, there's a lot of people now doing, you know, online courses which uh, and classes, which you can maybe take some time out. So, Matt, maybe that's a thing you could do a bit like uh, the oh, – what's the guy's name, the fitness guy? I should know his oh, name. Joe Wicks. Of, Joe Wicks. So he could be yeah. a bit of a Joe Wicks. And uh, uh, Joel just mentioned there as well about you know oakley um matt's son just walking in halfway through the class but i think that's brilliant you know that yeah. just goes back to homework and you can just stop and go it's all right son we'll we'll deal with that and <laughs> everyone else is watching you know i'm just half expecting yeah. one of my kids uh were um walking in uh both dadless on toro and beats were founded on building an organization that's family friendly working practices i'm so happy more people are having the chance to see the light so yeah this is mm. it you know this is the founding principles. It's about getting that, you know, trying to be dad a bit more. And and like yeah. you said at the beginning of the show, not just um, being, you know, the person that goes out to work and comes in and sees the kids when they're asleep. Um, yeah. And, and you know, so um, I was talking about this earlier today because um, I've got a 10-month-old daughter as, as well, as a five-year-old son. And the bond that me and my daughter have is so much stronger than me and my son when he was at that age because I was I was home most nights but I was out all day and really for a good third of her life I've been here every single day all day um and not only has that been great for me to you know I've seen her starting to crawl I've seen where they kind of rock back and forwards and then they get it and then they start moving and and that's been great but just things like when I could never settle my son, like I couldn't get him to sleep because I I wasn't a stranger, but I wasn't there a lot. And with my daughter, yeah. it's almost the other way around. Like she'll be reaching out for me and I, I can settle her quite easily. And in the night I can get up with her if she gets up and she just kind of falls asleep on my shoulder, which my son never did. Now, yes, different children, you know, it it could just be serendipity, but I think some of it is, well, I'm here a lot more. And actually, yeah. I think when this does end, and I mean like proper end, there's a vaccine and people are going back to offices in some, you know, probably a long time away. 
I think that I am going to want to work from home more, you know, maybe two or three days a week. But I will, even if it's just the once, I'm going to change what I do. I thought I thought I was pretty fluid with working from home, but I am yeah. going to say, oh, I'm joining this call and my kid is going to be with me. Or, you know, I'm going to go and, and do the food shop uh, when I'm working from home, which is something that I'd never do. Uh, or I'm going to go to the gym, which again is something that I wouldn't do. Yeah. But it, yeah. So it's really taught me um, that I, you, you know, even even me as a flexible working advocate has a long way to go. Yeah, th there's definitely a long way to go, and hopefully this is this is a bit of a start of, of the journey. Um, so uh, so Barry's uh, said uh, I don't want to go back to work. Uh, like not what I was doing, how I was doing it. In fact, work is now very much secondary in my thinking, and, and yeah. you know I. I hope a lot of people feel that way. Um, from from my experience, I built up my first business to a a fair size, um, and had you know quite a few people working for me. I was I was one of many directors when we uh, I sold out into another business, and there was a period of two or three years when my children were quite young, where I wasn't home a lot. And I know mm. this is something that Dan uh, Flanagan, who who founded Dad Soul and Top Rock and Beats Experience, and it was part of the reason why he set up uh, Dad Soul. Um, and now I've got um, Reggie, who's now six months old. I'm loving spending time with him. I really enjoy it. And mm. you know, if if someone was to come and take that away from me, I say, do you know what? I'll downsize. I don't. Well, I don't think we could downsize anymore. Sophie's <laughs> just over there looking at me. But we haven't looked at, at bigger houses and, and bet, better cars. I'm living with what I got yeah. because I'm going, yeah. I don't need more money. Um, yeah. You know, I think I need more time and I need the money to be able to do the things I love to do. Yes. Yeah. Um, so interestingly, my oldest daughter and youngest son have really bonded during this uh, initially after being a little distant. So that's another thing, mm. actually, you know, siblings being at home, whole families being at home together. Um, we're just coming into the last sort of 15 minutes of the show here, Dan. And uh, something I wanted to say earlier on and we haven't done uh, in a while on these chats is just everyone that's watching right now. Can you pre please press the share button? Let's just see if we can get a few more people watching this and obviously let people know they, they've obviously missed a fair bit of the show now, but they can watch it back from the beginning. So you're listening to the Dad the Soul Deep Dive, and this is funded by Worthing Community Chess. And I'm here with Dan Reed, uh, career dad, and we're talking about how to how to boss working from home. Very I'm, not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure we're bossing it, but we're we're giving it a good go. Um so you you mentioned earlier on actually about back-to-back -back zoom meetings and mm -hmm. uh have you heard of something called zoom fatigue so uh no so i'd like you to tell me a bit about this i i can i can build a mental picture but yeah yeah i, I think we felt it even if we don't know what it is and and mm. when we come off a zoom meeting and let alone back-to-back -back zoom meetings we feel a little bit tired and, and almost mm. uh you know worn out and you think hang on i haven't done anything what's what's been occurring and actually mentally it's quite a battle um it's very different from sitting in a meeting with uh, with other people and there's a link coming up here to um a harvard uh, study about zoom fatigue um and you know there's a few things you can do to make them easier and i've actually started to use some of these things and okay. actually when i come off of an hour hour and a half meeting i feel a lot fresher um, and one of the biggest things that's worked for me is hiding my own view. So I don't know if it works on other ones. You can go in, in Zoom. There's a three yeah. little buttons up the top right. You can press on that, and you could hide your own view. Everyone else can still see you, but you can't see yourself. And part of the thing it talks about in this study is while we're seeing ourselves, and especially like I can see myself now, and that I, on mm -hmm. StreamYard I can't turn myself off, but mm -hmm. um, there's a delay in what I'm doing, and my mouth isn't moving with my ears and stuff, and your brain is trying to fill in all those gaps, and it can get very tired, and that right. can create, you know, Zoom fatigue. Um, so, oh, okay. yeah, one of the ways you can combat that is to turn off your, your self-view. Um, there's another few things on this as well is about building in breaks like anything else. So mm. uh, this morning we had the Data Soul Management meeting. Um, we had one last week, and – we had the operational meeting and then we had a half hour break before we went into the second part of it because it allows you if you're changing topics to be able to sort of regroup walk away have a cup of tea and you know that feeds into what we said earlier and then come back for that second part of the meeting if it sort of changes speed a little bit mm. um 
so you know that's definitely um an important thing to to try and build into your to your day um and another thing is to reduce on-screen stimuli so if you've got loads of windows open and stuff going on again um it gives you too too much to focus on your brain's just working mad um i mean have have you felt really fatigued yeah absolutely and um and i think the window thing's really interesting especially if you've got second screens because you can you can have you know the visual screen up here and you, you can see it when you're on meetings you know if i've got my laptop down here and i'm just like this and you just yeah. know that I'm not present, but I'm kind of, you know, kind of sort of see this going on here, sort of hear stuff coming in here, but replying to emails, doing the thing. It's that classic multitasking, but actually you're right. Your brain, you know, your your processing speed is just going, no, nope, I can't, I can't go on. You, you've just hit on another point, actually, that was brought up on this is um, we've all got to learn that just because someone isn't staring down the barrel of the lens doesn't mean we're not listening. I know sometimes they're not listening, um, but actually, if you were sat in a meeting, you're, you're not completely focused on that other person mm. all the time. Like this. Imagine if you were, I mean, actually, there's, there's a thing on here. On a, This was off the Harvard thing. I bought it on a video call. The only way to show we're paying attention is to look at the camera. But mm. in real life, how often do you stand within three feet of a colleague and stare in their face? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, pretty <laughs> off putting, isn't it? <laughs> you know, in, in a meeting environment, um, you know, you, you, would, you would maybe look across there or look out of that. And it mm. doesn't mean we're not paying attention, but we feel in here we need to be staring all the time to to be noticed so you know Mm. that's definitely a a, another thing to pay attention to um and i do wonder how much of that is people who aren't necessarily used to the situation who are kind of overcompensating to show that they are present you know so it's like you know if i go for for a walk with my daughter and say i'm not going on video call you can almost hear, you know, the gasps around the auditorium of oh, what is he doing? But it's, yeah, I don't know whether people are going, yeah, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And actually, as this goes on, they might think, well, I don't need to do that. Yeah, I don't know. absolutely. I, I think we've all got to learn new things. And, and just to, to nod to what Matt just said up there and, and to Barry, you know, they're, they're all really good points. Um, you know, I think we all just need to grow into this. You know, it's 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 been a very new thing for so many people, um, you know, and, and we need to reevaluate our work and home life. You know, well said mm. there, Joel. Um, and, and also the way we you know, we sit on these calls and, and yes, at the moment we're, we're talking to each other and we're talking to everyone else and we need to be very present. But actually if you're in a one, two hour meeting, you know, does it matter if I sort of sit there and have a cup of tea? I'm still listening. I, I, you know, unless someone's actually doing a presentation, another good point, excuse me, that was brought up on this as well is actually we maybe are overusing um, Zoom. Um, We all go, yep, jump on a Zoom call. And you're like, actually, just having a conversation with someone over the phone is sometimes all it takes. Um, And and switching to emails and and some chat. You know, we need to to balance this out. Um, There might be too much messaging going on here. Sometimes, you know, uh, an email chain is much easier done over a video call. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and I think as well that there's, I hate the way that diary invite meetings um, default 30 minutes because it's, because it's the lazy thing to do, right? Oh, I'm just going to put some time in view to discuss X. Really, that can be done in, unless it's quite complex, five minutes. Yeah. And, and so something that <laughs> I'm trying to work with our internal IT guys is can, can I override that and default 15 minutes? Because I don't need half an hour. And now yeah. that we can't just do that side of desk thing, that's being translated into 30 minute blocks. And wow. that's where you find where you have, right, I've got a 30 minute meeting, but it's only lasted 10 minutes. Now I'm running to find 20 minutes of family time. Whereas actually, if that was scheduled in that up front that could potentially be easier so it i mean everyone's just trying to play catch up here at the moment you know it's just suddenly been dumped on everyone and, and we've got to give a little bit of slack to the systems mm. um maybe to the government i don't know but we'll see people's own views we won't go down there at the moment but <laughs> uh, um you know we've got to realize everyone's just been thrust into this and, yeah. and you know it seems ridiculous that you can only schedule a half hour slot in your diary for something that mm-hmm. you might in an office environment walk up to someone's mm-hmm. guests and go uh oh can we just do this yeah no worries and it's done yeah um so the it departments need to catch up and you know maybe even allow five minute block segments for a catch up yeah Um, yeah, yeah. sometimes in a video call or a phone call you can you can get 
a lot more across than you can in an email chain. Exactly. Other times, an email suffices. It's it's yeah. us. We've now got all these resources, and it's us using them in the best way possible. Mm. Um, the class WhatsApp for my free road uh, is between 100 and 300 messages pop up on a, a day at school. Insane. We've had to opt out of school technology. Yeah. I mean, this is this is something that was brought up um, a few series ago now with Simon Cannon about you know uh, over stimulating and sending stuff out to to kids and students and adults you know you you just can't process this stuff yeah no uh, yeah i i think that's that's the same we've got microsoft teams for uh my, my son's school and yeah i kind of check in every few days because it's just it's just nuts um and and there's one thing i i kind of just i know i know we're, we're, we're semi short of time but i i just wanted to to kind of pose a question and it might be not a very popular uh thought and i just did in, in, appreciate your your take on this because i've noticed that a lot of the comments are around um the you know better work-life balance and enjoying this more family time and and i think joel might have said you know was definitely very career driven and now doesn't feel it as as much or something something i'm really struggling with is i feel like the career part of me has been put on hold so right. i I feel like, yes, I'm having all this great family time and I'm definitely enjoying that, but I am equally fulfilled by the pursuit of my career. And I'm really struggling that that has just had a big hang break put on it. And yeah, um, yeah I just don't, I don't know. I know that might not be a very popular, uh, popular view, but it's just something that I think about <laughs> probably more than I should. I, I've heard it quite a lot, you know, and, and you get to that stage where you go, hang on a minute, I was completely career focused and, and now that's gone. But actually, I miss that and you might mourn for it, but I, I don't. I, I'm enjoying what I have now mm. and that's kind of like a weird transitional thing I, I've done it you know yeah. I, I wouldn't say I'm I wanted a big building with people working for me and, and all this and I got it and when I got it I hated it um, you know and and that kind of changed my thinking so I, I changed my way of life and everything before mm. we went into this um, I think it's going to take us all the time to adapt and reevaluate yeah. what we want to get out of life um, yeah. I think, you know, careers are important and they give us a sense of who we are and well-being, but we can get that out of a family as well. And we're going to start mm. to realise that a lot more. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's, I think it's just a case of, of adapting. And this has all happened to us in the last few months. You know, we, yeah. we can't expect to get things right. It's going to take a while before we, we, we start to reevaluate. Um I, I spoke to a guy actually last year. Um, I was at a, a dad's festival in Cornwall and uh, I was chatting to him and I said, oh, what, you know, what are you up to? What do you do? And he said, oh, I'm a painter and decorator. And he said, I love it. He said, I haven't only worked for two weeks, but I don't need to because I got rid of the car and all this. And it turned out he was a high flyer in London before that. And he had all the cars and all the stress that went with it. Mm. And he was absolutely perfectly happy potting around in a rubbish old car, painting and decorating. He completely yeah. reevaluated his life. Um, yeah. I'm not saying that's for everyone, but I think, you know, we need to get to that stage. Um, so oh, this, this, this might be a good one for you to pick up on from Janice. How would you convince a line manager who is totally anti-flexible working to let you, uh, continue to work from home? Uh, it's, a, it's a great, great question. And it's something that I've come across, uh, quite, quite a few times. Um, I think my, my, my first, so, so I have a few questions, um, which I know we might not get time to, but but I also have something practical that you, you can do. <clears throat> I think that post lockdown, are they still anti-flexible working? Because I, I don't know how many people still are, or was it that they were, were anti-flexible working beforehand? Um, but I think if someone, if you have a boss that doesn't like flexible working, I think from your perspective, you have to remember um, that probably is more about them than it is about you. So don't take it as as a as a slight against you. But actually, what can you do to to get them to to be more on board? One argument that I found very hard to to argue with is is around testing. Now I'm a big fan of kind of test and learn this whole agile approach, which is quite big in kind of the corporate world. Um, but Testing is in to say, okay, what I'd like to do is work from home a day a week, two days a week, or, or five days a week, whatever it is, and I want to put a plan in place. So I want to test it for a month, and we're going to test it both like, like a proper test, like I'm going to have some qualitative and quantitative data. So I'm going to look at my productivity, but also my happiness, and we're going to measure that 
uh, before doing the test. We're then going to do a test for a month. And then at the end of that, we're both collectively, me as the employer, you as my manager, are going to go over the results and say, did this work? Are we happy with it? What did we learn? What could we improve on? Was it a complete failure? And actually, from the employer point of view, because I, from my own experience, I was actually at some one point looking to move to a four day working week and to have one day to focus on career dad. Now, I trialed that in this. I used my annual leave to do four day weeks uh, for six weeks. I hated it. I hated right. <laughs> it. Um, and, and I'm so pleased that I actually didn't just go full steam ahead and go, right, I now want to, to make this into, into policy. I think so. If you approach things, uh, generally, if someone is anti-flexible working, it's coming from a logical place that they're overloading with extra emotion of, well, they're just skiving, they're just doing whatever it is. If you say, no, I want to test this because I want, I have a hypothesis that I will be more productive or X, Y, Z, let's test it and see what comes out the other end. It takes a real, real bad manager to say, no, I'm not open to see if things can improve. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. It's about making those small steps. Um, there, there's quite a lot of that covered. If everyone, anyone's either read or wants to read the book, uh, the, the Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss, mm. um, and he covers sort of working from home and practices like that in there. And it's how to. I, I think it's almost impossible. In fact, it is impossible to have a four hour work week. Um, <laughs> you know, but uh, it gives you some really good tips, and and it kind of goes into some detail about trying to break away from from working and, and having that home working practice and just dropping those those in um it's about opening a dialogue with that manager and trying to yeah. overcome their fears yes. um, and i think perfect what you said actually it was interesting you went away and you tested this mm -hmm. and you went back and probably said actually it didn't work for me so let's not do that yeah 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 but but again with with the working from home and, the, and again when i kind of for, for my team um Initially, when I suggested to my bosses that we wanted to do kind of working from home, it was right. We need we need a rotor. We need this and this and this. And and I just said, look, do you trust me to go and see if this works? And we went away. We measured it, and and after a month, came back and said productivity is up one hundred and sixty nine percent. Our happiness scores and kind of also stakeholder and colleagues. Uh, their satisfaction of our team had increased from kind of threes and fours to, to eights and nines. So across the board, you can go, this this works. So yeah. do you want us to be un unhappy and less productive? Is It then becomes a real, the conversation then isn't, I'd like to work from home. How do we have that? It's, can I be happier and more productive? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 and I think what's happened to us and we've all been thrown in this as, as sort of over, over in that. I know Chris, uh, producer Chris actually um, it spoke to his company about working from home a while ago and they said there was health and safety issues. Now he's working from home, you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> Funny. I don't know. He probably spills a cup of tea a couple of times a day, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, we, we've run out of time. It's been really uh, good having you on here and having this conversation. No, Dan, thank, you and, and thank you. Thank you for your time. And thank you for everyone for joining in. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Really appreciate everyone that's, that's been a part of the show. And even if you just sat there and got something out of it, um, you know, you can always get in touch through the Dad the Soul platform. And uh, what's the best way we can get a hold of you, Dan? We've got your uh, website, careerdad.co.uk. Yeah, so so careerdad.co.uk. Uh, LinkedIn is probably where I'm most uh very there. Active on there very active on, on linkedin every so that's... time i open linkedin the first thing that comes <laughs> up is you <laughs> sorry about that that's all uh, right. it's just gaming the algorithm um <laughs> yeah so 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 linkedin or yeah i mean if you if you went to careerdad.co.uk from there you've got all the social channels uh the podcast the career dad show which i know uh, dan flanagan was on uh recently which was great yeah. um yeah and and, and anyone who does want to talk more about kind of flexible working or that corporate world or any of that stuff, you know, I'm more than happy to have a, a chat with you. So please do reach out. Look, oh, just found us guys via BBC World Service. There we go. See, we're all over the place. There you go. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we were live on BBC. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Hey guys, if, if you're still listening, hope, I, I can see there's a number of people still out there. And thank you for hanging on there through the show. If you can just, if you haven't already hit that share button so people in your network can see it, hopefully they can get a benefit from it. And just a quick one next week, we got uh, Brittany Logson from Magic Little Moments coming up. She's a baby massage expert. I'm discussing techniques that can be used to help with baby and ease stress levels in parents. I've been to one of her physical classes and I found some really great ways to soothe Reggie as a dad, something that's something we don't get that tentative touch with our babies as well. So please come in and get involved with that next week. And then the following week on the 25th, we'll be going live at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, an earlier time because uh, it was just a case of getting this guy in when when we could fit him in. But I'll be talking to next Royal Marine Commando PT instructor, James Bourbon. He's uh, also an author. We'll be discussing how fitness can help with mental health. Don't worry if you can't make along the live session at 9 a.m., um, we will be resharing that as a watch party at the normal time of 8 p.m. on that same day, on the 25th. So thank you, Dan. Thank you, everyone. No, thank you. Um, yeah thanks everyone for making it so interactive yeah it's cool i I really enjoyed it so uh yeah we'll hopefully see you all here next week thank you very much sign us out christopher wait for the